All right, continuing where we left off. Um, now I'm about to create an LOD object for this Tudor house. So all these houses. So uh, let's zoom in on these meshes. So we're going to combine all these meshes. So the first uh, part of the procedure is the same. We just create an empty game object. I'll call it house. Um, I could add the LOD component now to that object or later, doesn't matter. Um, so I've added the LOD component. We need to add the meshes. So we're going to add these various meshes to house. Um, okay, losing prefix. I'm dragging those out of the Blender file and into that one. Um, unlike Unity LOD, you don't these meshes can come from any and different places. Um, in this case, they're all out of the same file. They were all modeled in the same file, but you could have them modeled in different files and, and drag them in. Um, and then we need to set up these levels again. So I just add level. Um, I click this plus one, two, three. So I've got four levels. And then we add LOD0 to the first one, LOD1 to the second one, LOD2 to the third one, LOD3 to the fourth one. And then we set the screen distance. So let's say maybe half the screen. That'll switch at 16. Maybe uh, 0.2. That'll switch at 40. Let's make that 0.1. That'll switch it at 80. Then... Uh, 0 0.06, that'll switch it at 130, and then the last one will be visible to 0 0.02. Now yeah, let's make it higher, 0 0.05. Now yeah, the lower, so 0 0.04. So that'll switch it out at 200. So there. Now I think we can, oh, and we should. We, these meshes all have to be piled on top of each other. So let's go to the house, set the transform to zero. And then for each of these meshes, we'll set the transform to zero so they're all centered. Okay, and now this LOD object I think is ready for business. So let's put it in front of the cam. Oh, it's already in front of the camera, good. So we can press play. And um, oh, we're gonna, I want to move the uh, the camera. Where's the camera? Main camera. So we move the camera. Let's move this over, and you can see the house popping to a different level as the camera moves. Now, notice it jumps. So let's see what's going on there. If we look closer, ah, something's funny about these models. Their, their, their base is not the same. So um, that's a modeling problem, not a mesh baker problem. Uh, but we can also just manually fix it. Let's just switch this to wireframe and then try to get these so that they line up all together. That looks pretty good. Okay. So try that again. See in view, grab my camera, try to get Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, let's go back to textured view. Okay, so so far so good. Um, this is actually working, but obviously the closest level of detail there's no windows. What's with that? Um, well, we have to, uh, the w on the closest level of detail, the windows are actually a separate mesh with uh, its own material applied. And so we can make those work sim simply by dragging all these, co all this contents. Everything else here is contents of the first level of detail. And we just drag those in to be children of the first level of detail. And uh, we have to adjust the transforms on those, obviously to zero. You can, I think, do this multi thing. Oh, it doesn't let me just click the button if I do that. 
So just change those. So all of that co those contents should be inside the house. So now if we press play, when you see the first level of detail, it's got the windows. And if we zoom in, you should be able to see the table. There's the table through the window. Uh, the door, there's actually going to be two doors. And I have to move position them, so that's why they don't show up. And there's stairs inside, too. Um, so, so that's all working. However, um, if we bring up the stats window, there's seven draw calls. And that's because there's a draw call for the combined mesh, a draw call for the cup, the door, the stairs. These aren't the cup door and stairs aren't being combined into the combined meshes. And we would like that. So how do we do that? Well, basically what we need to do is set up a little level of detail underneath the LOD0 level of detail for each of those. So um, let's go out here. So I create another game object, drag it in to the level of detail. I call it cup. I'm going to drag the other cup to be a child of this cup. And then I put the renderer on the parent. So you can't actually put the render. You're not allowed to put the renderer on the um, uh, on on the object that has. You're not allowed to put the LOD component on the object that has the renderer uh, because the renderer gets disabled um, when things happen and you don't want the LOD component to be disabled because then it won't receive its update calls and things won't work properly. So then we drag the cup up to here. Screen percentage we set to um, let's say point two or something. Um, we want this cup to appear um, how, how far away? So it's point five uh, distance from camera to switch. That's uh, no point one. Oh, point one three. Uh, let's go for for the way point zero five. Yeah, zero two. So at fifteen meters away, the cup is going to appear. So that's about what we want. So then we do the same thing with um, every, all these other objects. Actually, let's do the stairs first because and the table because they're simple okay so we add an LOD object component we drag oh add the LOD level drag the stairs in screen percentage. Uh, these are pretty big, so I don't know, 0.3 or something. Yeah, that's about good. So the stairs will appear when the user is 12 meters away from the stairs. Table, game object, create other. Drag it into the table. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. I want it up under the LOD, drag the table to be a child, call it table, add the LOD component. And um, add a level, drag the table, let's say 0.5, no, 0.2. Point one, so the table will appear when the user is 17 units away, which is actually higher than the LOD. However, because this is a child of LOD zero, the table will be hidden as long as LOD zero is hidden. And then, um, okay, so that's all that stuff done, and all of these are part of will will be mapped to the same combined mesh as the house. So I think we're set up. If we just press play, let's see what happens. Um, so there were two bakes, one for the, the thing, and the draw calls have dropped from seven to four. So all of that internal contents are now being being baked. Okay, so uh, the cup and the window are exactly the same process. 
So I'll do those last. Let's do the door. This one's a little different because um, the doors move. And so first off, we want... Actually, let's set them up and then duplicate them. We're going to have two of them. Um, so add our game object. Drag it in to the house. Call it door. Oh, wait. Drag the door to be a child. Add a component, an LOD component, um, add a level, drag. So you have to have at least one level. Uh, let's go 0 0.5, no, 0.1. We want the doors to show up about the same time. So 0, 0.5. Yeah, so that's about right. So that door should show up at the same time that the house does. Um, call it door. Oh, and have I been switching the transforms on these? Let's set the transforms of all of these to zero. And I should have done that. Oh, wait. The door shouldn't be up there. It should be under LOD zero. Yeah. Same thing with the cup. Okay, so what's interesting about the okay the doors? We want two of them, so let's create the second one. Uh, Control D, and then let's position them. And this is easiest to do in wireframe. So I've got a door selected. Let's name them differently so I know which one's which. Door one, door two. So we've got door two selected. I'll move it out. Oh. It's hard to see, but something like that. And door one should go about here. And then in the X direction, it should go over to about there and there. Okay, so my doors should be positioned, textures, and now I press play and we'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, there's my doors. They're not quite in position, but that's good enough. However, um, I'm getting some warnings. Uh, um, the set of materials on LOD door match multiple bakers. Try using labels, and the same as the stairs and the house. So all of these things, if you remember, if we look at our bakers um, in the LOD manager, the, uh, the doors have material house too, and the houses have material house too. So these can be baked by the same baker. So this is where these labels come into effect. So if we set a label, we can force the door to be baked by a particular baker. So door, set the label to be a door. That matches what we had before. Door. And um, the stairs, we want to be baked by the, the house, uh, the table. Actually, we, we don't need to set that one because it had its own things, but the house, uh, we need to set the label for that. And that will make sure the doors get baked by the particular label. But there's also one th other thing we want to do for these doors, which is we can bake them into the combined meshes, but then they can't move. Um, so we could leave them out of the combined meshes, and then they can move independently of each other. Um, but we got more draw calls. So a neat trick is we couldn't, we can, even though these are mesh renderer objects, we can bake them into a skinned mesh renderer. So let's show you how to do that. So on the door LOD object, I can say mesh renderer, skinned mesh renderer, mesh renderer, skinned mesh renderer. So um, I'm now telling, so this tells 
the LOD man so when when this LOD object registers with the LOD manager, it it looks for a baker that has the materials, but also a baker that will bake into a skinned mesh renderer. So this first baker is the mesh baker doors. We have to change the setting on that mesh baker to bake it into a skinned mesh renderer. So if we go down to the mesh baker options, we change this to skinned mesh renderer. And uh, now what happens, we press play. There should be no warnings or anything. So that got rid of the warnings. And draw calls is five. That's higher than it should be. I'm surprised it's that high. There's a mesh for the doors. Oh, you know what I think it is? Um, okay, so there's a mesh for the doors, a mesh for the house, a mesh for the windows, the ground. And I think one of these is uh, causing two draw calls because probably the transparent one. But look at this. This is very cool. If we look at the doors, um, the renderer is on the door is disabled, but it's visible. It's in the combined mesh. However, if we move that door, it moves independently of the other door, and that's because its mesh, if we can find it here, its mesh is a skinned mesh. So both doors are combined into the skin mesh. So there's one draw call, but it's a skin mesh, so you can um, you can move that door. Very cool. Uh, I think that's a modeling artifact. That little bit I should clean that up in the model. Okay, so um, I think we're almost done. Oh, the window. That's why we're getting. We haven't set up the window or the cup. So the final step is just to um, actually we did set up the cup. It's got its LOD on it, but we didn't set up the window. That's why we were getting the fifth draw call. Okay, so game object create empty. Window. Um, point one, no, point two, point three, five. That's about right. The windows will show up rough. Actually, let's go point four. They'll show up about the same time the house does. Um, so there we go. Uh, this should work, and we should have lost a draw call. So draw call is four. Yeah, so one draw call for the house, one draw call for the um, the doors, one draw call for the windows. So there it all is. You can see inside there's the table. You can see the stairs through the window. And then if I move the camera away, main camera, as the camera moves away, it pops to the next level of detail, and this is just one flat mesh for everything. And then if I move it farther away, you'll see it pop to the next level of detail at a certain point. There it goes. So as you can see, it's even, uh, you know, co much coarser mesh. The windows aren't in set and stuff. And then the final level detail is just, uh, uh, you know, that's for the far distance. And if we look in the game view, you don't really notice because it's, well, A, the house is sideways and there's no lighting, but, you know, it's small. It doesn't need to be a fancy mesh at that level of detail. And the final step is let's prefab that. Create a prefab and drag in our um, house. It's all been set up. Call it house. And let's try to create a prefab of the LOD manager.
Uh, let me create a prefab. Okay, and now we can pop over to our game scene. So save, let's go to our game scene. Let's delete everything else. This is my previous scene. Actually, keep the camera. I set all this stuff up previously. And I'll keep the ground because I haven't done anything with the ground. Um, and then we can just drag our new LED manager in. Um, drag a bunch of houses. Duplicate those a few times. Move them around. Uh, drag some trees in. Uh, and uh, make sure our camera has the LOD camera script on it, and I think we're ready to go. Let's clear this. So we'll ignore the phone for now. Um, so as I move this camera around, you can see the LODs popping in and out. Uh, my light is in a terrible space, but uh, you can see the LODs switching as the camera moves around. So uh, that so once we've set up all these LODs and set up the manager to work, it's pretty easy to just pop these things in and out of uh, a, our game scenes when we're setting up our level. Anyway, that's how to set up the MeshBaker LOD. In the next tutorial video, I will show how to do skinned meshes because there's uh, some tricky things there. Anyway, um, MeshBaker LOD and MeshBaker is available in the Unity Asset Store.